Good morning, everyone. I'm Nikki Stanzione. I'm Kristen Van Dyke. And this is New Mexico Style. And yes, happy birthday, New Mexico. 100 years ago today, New Mexico became the 47th state of the Union. And it's very exciting. The Albuquerque Journal actually has produced this beautiful insert that you can actually find. You'll see a whole thing in here. It's beautiful. You can find this actually in today's edition, New Mexico, 100 years of statehood. It highlights the state's history with fascinating stories and images. And you can just pick one up and in just a few minutes, we'll actually find out what the city of Albuquerque has planned to celebrate this important day today. There's some good stuff, including yeah. some honking of the horns. Are you going to honk? Oh, I honk. I honk inside. from inside. I honk anyway. I'm from Jersey. Honk <laughs> yes. our horns all the time. Yeah, know, that's fun. Exciting stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on in Santa Fe, too. You have the ball tonight at 6 o'clock mm -hmm, with the mm -hmm. governor. And, of course, there, she's going to be making a big announcement, too, about uh, this picture taking where you go. And you, it's going to be for this year. There's going to be a $10,000 reward. Okay. And what you do is you go and remake old photos taken in different places across the state and you I make them that. look like these old photos and then it's a contest. How oh, cool that's that? fun. So there's going to be a whole press release on that later on today. And we'll, yeah, we'll be talking on that. Yeah, we'll be talking a lot more about what's planned. So definitely stay tuned for that. And moving on from this yesterday, you may remember we were talking about plastic surgery and Barbies, right? Well, there is some controversy brewing in England where a 51-year-old mother gave her 7-year-old daughter an $11,000 gift certificate for liposuction. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. her, her little right. daughter. Yes, Sarah yeah. Burge, the mother. Yeah. Yeah. She's also known in England as the human Barbie. And here's why. Let's take a look at her photos before wow. and after. Well, Wait, are you saying you can't be a Barbie if you have black hair? That's not fair. Not. <laughs> you don't have to be blonde to be like Barbie. Although, I mean... Oh, there she oh, is again. Look at the yeah. little beauty mark. Uh-huh. That's, yeah, that's Barbie, Her face right? is looking pretty much like... Well, uh, Barbie there. A little. Well, the plastic surgery addict claims to have spent a million dollars on her own surgery, and she's defending this gift. What she's saying is that her daughter, Poppy, <laughs> her name is Poppy, <laughs> wants to look good, and lipo is one of those procedures that will always come in handy. Can you imagine? Mm. Sarah compared the investment to saying, well, it's like saving money for her education. And here's a picture of Sarah and Poppy together. What wonderful values she is teaching her daughter. She has also given Poppy a voucher for breast implants for her 16th birthday. Happy sweet 16, Poppy. You'll and be popping. You know what? You would think <laughs> maybe that would be the end of this craziness, but it doesn't stop there. Sarah has a 16-year-old daughter, Hannah, mm. who has already received Botox injections, already at 16. Oh and here's a picture of her. So... <laughs> <laughs> what? It, this is just craziness to me. We, we definitely want to know what you think. Please send your yeah. comments to us. Facebook.com. Oh, who needs Botox at 16? It's like you're, you're not even totally and developed. We we're talking about the Barbie doll itself setting a bad example. Right. The impossible body that it's nearly impossible to achieve. Right. You know? mm -hmm. And now you have the mother who's posing as Barbie and already saving up for her to get all this plastic surgery and have all this stuff <sighs> done. Yeah, it's I nonsense. think it's I think it's nonsense. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm all for looking your best, absolutely. But at that age, I think it's a little ridiculous. I think it's not the right set of values to be teaching a child. But like Kirsten said, we want to know what you think. So let us know, and we'll report that back to you early next week. Well, definitely look at looking like Barbie, plastic, plastic, right. very plastic, very plastic. Okay. So we should do the whole report like this, like with the plastic face. <laughs> Let's check in with KRQE News 13 anchor Elizabeth Alvarez for today's headlines. <laughs> nice, Nikki. I like it. Okay, good morning, ladies. Good morning to you at home. Topping your morning news headlines this morning, Mayor R.J. Berry announces major changes at the police academy, but he won't say if these changes have anything to do with the recent number of officer-involved shootings. From now on, if cadets want a job with APD, they'll need to have at least 60 hours of college credit or serve in the military for three years. Those were the rules back in the 1990s. But Mayor Marty Chavez then changed it in 1999 in an effort to hire more officers. Now the department will also hire a civilian training director to run the academy. What can you do legally to protect yourself if someone is breaking into your home? Many viewers have been asking us that question after a woman in Oklahoma shot and killed a man who was trying to break into her home. So the 18-year-old was home with her newborn when it all went down. This is her 911 call. Take a listen. I've got two guns in my hand. Is it okay to shoot him if he comes in the store? Well, you have to do whatever you can do to protect yourself. I can't tell you that you can do that, but you do what you have to do to protect your baby. 
So this mom here did shoot and kill one of those men. Now, she wasn't arrested or charged with any crime in Oklahoma. In New Mexico, there is a state statute referred to as justifiable homicide by a citizen. It basically states homicide is justified when protecting yourself, your family, or your property. The law also provides protection when great personal injury is being committed against a person. And it goes on to cover another area that involves attempting to apprehend a person who is committing a felony. But the bottom line here is it must be in self-defense and you must be in real fear for your life or the life of another. Now, if the suspect gives you a chance to retreat or the suspect attempts to leave, that's where the law gets dicey. It is up to local law enforcement to decide whether or not to make an arrest. A school principal that cops say tried to run over her cheating husband struck a deal with prosecutors. Rebecca Robertson is the principal at Osuna Elementary School in Albuquerque. She was initially charged with stalking and harassment. Police say Robertson chased down her husband, who is a former assistant principal at another school, after she found out he was stepping out on her. Robertson has pled guilty to only unreasonable noise. Again, she is still principal at Osuna Elementary. A state legislator has decided not to accept his salary from the Albuquerque School District during this year's legislative session. By law, Republican Tim Lewis, who is a teacher at Cibola High School, could still collect his paycheck after the school district changed its policy to allow lawmakers, who are also educators, to get paid while the legislature is in session. Now, that wasn't always the case until a News 13 Larry Barker investigation found that an AP S administrator and state representative there had been pocketing her school salary while serving in Santa Fe when she wasn't supposed to. Then, after this investigation, the superintendent changed APS policy. We all know how fast winter storms can hit New Mexico, and for people traveling on the roads, the best advice is always to be prepared. And guess what? There's an app for that. De developers have come up with the Winter Survival Kit application for cell phones. The app can pinpoint a motorist's location, notify friends and family of trouble, and call 911 and even give you an idea of how, how much uh, gas is in your gas tank. Well, something like this may have come in handy for an Albuquerque couple, Dana and Betty Davis. You remember them. They were stranded in Arizona last month. Such a tragic story. The two became lost, left their vehicle for help, and Betty Davis, unfortunately, ended up dying. The app is available now to iPhone and Android users. So good to know there. All right, Facebookers, listen to this. A virus has hacked into 45,000 Facebook accounts all over the world. Now we're talking usernames and passwords have been breached. So if you use Facebook, you need to know about this. The thing is right now it hasn't reached the US yet, but it may be a good idea to change up your password. Note to self. All right, that wraps it up for your morning headlines this morning. Be sure to catch Matt Morrow, Kristen Van Dyke, and myself every weekday morning from 5 to 7 a.m. on KRQE News 13. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Nikki, Friday. Happy you got to raise the roof on Fridays. Yeah. I know. Love that. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. And now we are joined by our good friend and photographer of our show, Kenny Hatchett, who is also a volunteer over at the Eastside Animal Shelter. I am, yes. Our pet of the week. Pet yes, yes, pet of the week. And I have a bone to pick with this guy. <laughs> he got loose in the news studio earlier when I was doing weather. Yeah. He was running around like a crazy dog, but what a cutie. Tell he's us about very, it all. Yes, he's adorable. He's uh, one years old. His name is Clark, right? His name is Clark. Clark. Yeah, like Clark Kent. Um, yeah, he's very energetic. He, uh, mm -hmm. he will keep you... Uh, Occupied, happy, happy and occupied. In yes. good shape. In good shape. Than yes. How old is he? Mm -hmm. he's, he's one year. One year. One year old. Okay. Yeah. So he's young. He's like a baby. He is a baby. He's he's a and what kind? Of he's a Dotson, um, and looks to me like beagle mix. Yeah, beagle. I see, yeah. definitely yeah. see some beagle in him. Yeah. yeah. So, and he's happy. He's very happy. He's he very sweet. Happy. He loves people. He's good in the car. Um, <laughs> good with other animals. Good with Good to know. Good what? To know. Is he good with other pets? Uh, yeah, he seems to be. He, 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 you know, he likes to talk some to other dogs, but uh, but he doesn't seem to be aggressive or anything. He's, he he's very sweet. You, Kenny. Very sweet. Look at how he's resting on your shoulder. <laughs> he's in love. He's a lover. He is. He's a lover, not a fighter. But he is a barker once in a while. Aw, look at those <laughs> <laughs> those big brown eyes. See, he, I'll tell you, brown eyes will get you. Hopefully, Aww. he won't be at the shelter long. He's at the East Side Animal Shelter. All right. So how do they? How do people get a hold if they want to adopt this uh, sweet thing? Three one one. Three one one. That's it.
311. So simple. So please do make sure that you give Clark a chance to have a brand new home. What a great way to start the new year with a brand new pet. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Clark. <laughs> oh, I love him. He's Too cute. cute. I'm yes. sorry he barked during your morning newscast. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I forgive him. His eyes are too too cute not to. Happy well, we're going to be looking at changes moving in this weekend weather-wise. Right now, 30 Shoot. degrees out there. Mostly clear skies, so not too bad. High today, 47. A little cooler than where we were yesterday. And then topping out in the mid to upper 50s this afternoon out east, so slightly cooler in a few spots there too. So sunny, just a little bit cooler today. Still going to be a really mild day for you. Get out and enjoy today and tomorrow. Looking like a carbon copy of today, really. Maybe a little breezier, but otherwise we'll still see more sunshine. Tomorrow night, the cold front moves through, and that's going to drop temperatures big time on Sunday. So much cooler Sunday. That goes into Monday, and we're tracking a storm system that's heading our way. That will move in Sunday afternoon and move across the state overnight Sunday into early Monday. Right now, still some uncertainty still with the exact track of that system. Looks like the best shot of snow will be across north and northeastern New Mexico. And then, of course, cooler behind that storm system as temperatures will be well below average again Sunday into Monday. So the storm is kind of a wild card right now. We'll take a closer look at the exact track of that system. We have a couple of scenarios to talk about, including the chance for some snow for the metro area. We'll take a look at that coming up later. Thanks, Kristen. And as we mentioned, of course, everybody knows by now that today is New Mexico's 100th birthday, and ABQ Ride is actually going to make some noise. ABQ Ride Public Information Officer Rick Duras joins us with the details. Good morning, Rick. We're so happy you're back with us today. Thank you very much for having us. This is amazing. It is. It's a wonderful day. Tell us a little bit about the ceremony. Well, uh, first of all, the, the end result is that we're asking New Mexicans to act like they're approaching the Haddonfield exit on the Jersey Turnpike. <laughs> I know a little bit about that place. <laughs> yeah, honk your horns because it's going to be a whole symphony of noise coming up. Uh, starting at 11.15 at the Alvarado Transportation Center at First and Central, uh -huh. we're going to have um, uh, the New Mexico Territorial Brass Band in their uniforms playing 1912-era songs. Oh, wow. And then what we'll end up with is ultimately uh, we're going to get the mayor out there. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the fact that New Mexico didn't get a lot of fanfare when mm -hmm. it became the 47th State of the Union a right. hundred years ago. But people didn't find out about it until until the next day. Oh my gosh. Because yeah, uh, President Taft decided he that there was no impediment, real impediment, and instead of signing him into the earlier, uh, later in the week, he figured, let's bring everybody in and just sign it. Oh wow, and so, so that's interesting. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it the fanfare it deserves. Uh, New Mexico Rail Runner has a locomotive there. Amtrak has agreed to help us out. We've got the folks from the New Mexico Steam Locomotive and Railroad Historical Society oh, have fantastic. set up a huge whistle, uh -huh. and it's the kind that that, uh, that whole thing goes off and it's going to be the huge noise okay and then we're going to have um, uh, kids uh, ornaments that are going to go later on in the archives amazing uh, we've got the the mayor's going to proclaim happy birthday in New Mexico we want everybody to make some noise we love it and what's the exact time you want the honking of the horns 11 35 a.m. 11 35 and if you hear the noise coming from downtown just go and 30 seconds is all it's needed that's perfect and of course it's today and that is going to be 11 35 also the ceremony coincides with the opening of a permanent exhibit at the Alvarado Transportation. Tell us real quick about that. Uh, it has the history of the Alvarado Hotel and also the history of public transportation in Albuquerque. Come by and see it, if, if only for that reason. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, happy birthday, New Mexico, and thank you, Rick, for all you, you do for, for the community. Me. Thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. And still ahead, break the trend and keep your New Year's resolutions. We'll tell you how. Don't go away.